You're distracted. I'm distracted. I, I'm, not, I'm not, not judging any of us. Not you, not me. War kicks off and dead kids and things like that. We're going to be understandably distracted. I'm not saying don't pay any attention to that, but let's do make sure we remember that we have domestic enemies here who have bad plans for you. And our president is a criminal. He sat down with a special counsel over the weekend, Robert Err, trying to explain himself and his, quote, mishandling of classified documents. Of course, he's always mishandled it. He didn't just steal them. He always mishandled them. Joining me now to talk about old Joe and many other things, Alex Marlowe, Breitbart News, editor-in-chief and author of this book about Biden and his crimes, Breaking Biden is the name of the book. I love that. Okay, Alex, while everyone else was distracted, Joe Biden's finding himself in a bit of hot water for one of the many crimes he apparently has committed. Yeah, the classified documents is just a slam dunk crime. And the fact that we're not focusing on it is purely a, a more evidence that the media hates this country and wants to protect the worst people in it because they're useful to them politically. Uh, it's every bit the same thing as Donald Trump did, aside from the fact that Donald Trump was president and could have declassified any of those documents. Uh, Joe couldn't have declassified any of the documents that he had. And not only could Joe have not have de declassified them, he hid them or not hit them in a place where literally Hunter Biden could have gotten them. So buy his Corvette in his garage. I mean, this is clearly criminal and everything that's being done to President Trump should be done to Joe Biden times 100. Okay, I'm worried that I already know the answer to this question, Alex, but so how is he going to get out of it? Because as you pointed out, it's such a black and white crime that me, idiot Jesse, can pull up my cell phone right now and I can look at a picture of the classified documents in Joe Biden's garage. It's a picture available on the internet because that moron published it himself. That's a crime. It's a felony on camera. Yes. How's he get out of it? Well, he gets out of it because the people who are going to be in charge of investigating him are people that he's either put in charge or know he's very useful to them. Uh, this is the reality of the deep state. And Jesse, I don't know if you've had the misfortune of having to live in Washington for any period of time, um, but I was there for almost a decade. And it's everything they say about it is true. It truly is a company town. The company is the government. And the biggest asset that the that company, which is our government, has is Joe Biden. He is the one that is able to continually humiliate himself by expanding budgets, by trillions of dollars we don't need. Uh, he is the one that makes sure all the most powerful people are not held to account. No heads roll whenever they make any mistakes. It's his system. He set this up. So, uh, no, of course he's not going to be held accountable unless it's Republicans who do it. But more likely, Jesse, it's the voters. Alex, everyone knows about Hunter Biden by this point in time. He is what you might call infamous. And people know a little bit about Jim Biden, not a bunch, but most yeah. people don't even know there is a Frank Biden. They don't understand how deep the Biden crime family goes. Can you explain Frank Biden? Who, who is this? Yeah, it, it, one thing I did in the book, and thank you for highlighting it, Jesse, is I, I went through all of the relevant Bidens, and uh, Bidens pop up everywhere in gnarly deals. Uh, one of the ones that kind of blew my mind was I realized that Joe's cancer moonshot was really a grift on behalf of his son-in-law, Ashley Biden's husband. I'll leave a big article on that at Breitbart if people want to check that out. Uh, but Frank Biden is a guy who has no skills that are known. It's a, we have no idea what he does or why he's doing things. And yet he managed to find himself in deal after deal. Uh, the most egregious one was this thing called Mavericks, which was he saw a big charter school grant was coming down the pike in Florida. And he somehow got himself in the charter school business, quickly setting up these schools, getting tons of investment. Well, all, all the schools failed the children and went out of business quickly. But not before Frank got to have some joy rides and a bunch of private planes and make a bunch of money. But the thing that was the craziest story that I found, maybe even in the whole book, but certainly when it comes to Frank, was about 25 years or so ago, Frank Biden, who had already had his license suspended because he had some DUI, stuff like that, was semi-operating a car, meaning it was his car. His friend was driving it, but he was operating the stick shift. Yeah, that was really happening. They had it going twice the speed limit, and they ran over a pedestrian, killed him, and drove away. So the guy ended up pleading guilty to manslaughter. Frank got a big fine slapped on him. He never paid the surviving family. So he owed these two girls, these two daughters, all this money. Never paid it. Interest accumulated until it was close to a million dollars. The family finally tracked him down when Joe was about to become vice president. And Joe helped him dodge it. Joe helped him hide like a coward. He was just bad people all the way around. 
they really are the scummiest people. And uh, the, something people don't realize, Alex, is how long they've been scummy. You know, Joe Biden was kind of ignored as vice president, a bit of a punchline. Most vice presidents are ignored anyway, but they've been scummy since forever, since before he was a senator. The family's just kind of gross. Uh, one of the grossest things, if not the grossest, I do cover some of the Ashley Biden diary in the book, so I won't say it's the grossest thing. Oh. But the second grossest thing that's covered in the book is actually something that took place in 1974, so nearly 50 years ago. It was Joe Biden who was doing an interview for Washingtonian Magazine with a blonde named Kitty Kelly. And his wife had passed away from a car accident a few years earlier. And Joe decided that he would use this time to regale this young reporter with vivid sex stories about his deceased wife. Gnarly stuff, some of it clearly fabricated, but talking about how even when on the campaign trail, Joe did a long day, he could still satisfy his wife in bed. It's all this completely nasty stuff. Uh, the blowback was so big for Joe. Jesse, he never sat for another interview for 15 years. He couldn't bring himself to do another interview for 15 years. That's how nasty this was. But almost 50 years ago is not talked. It's the grossest stuff. He's always been gross since the very beginning. You think, you say Joe Biden bears some responsibility for all this craziness we're seeing in Israel right now, don't you? I, I do, 100%. And again, there's another article, Breitbart, where I lay out all the evidence. Um, but you start with the most obvious one, which is that he left all these weapons for uh, terrorists to get in Afghanistan. The Afghanistan pullout was insane. It was the worst moment of Joe Biden's presidency, and there have been so many bad moments. Uh, but one thing I did compile in the book is I went through when I had to look at a lot of sources, compiling all the weapons that he left that got in the hands of the Taliban, who immediately started selling them to terrorists. We're talking about UH-60 Blackhawks, M16, M-17 helicopters. We're talking about gravity bombs, machine guns, hundreds of thousands of rifles, small drones, body armor. All this stuff was left there for the Taliban to get and then to sell the worst people on the planet. So it follows that, of course, terrorists were going to get it. But if you look through the whole rest of his philosophy on national security, he's empowered people like Iran and Russia, and he's taken away power from places like Israel, who are allies in the region. Not to mention, look at his philosophy on the border. It's a, he doesn't believe in, in national security, or else why would he have an open border? The guy is completely lost on this subject, and so often, Jesse, he goes it alone, which is super scary. Golly. Alex? Thank you so much for exposing this family. I want people to go buy Alex's book. Go get it. Go learn about just how dirty your president is. Alex Marlowe, my friend, I appreciate you and Breitbart very much. Jesse, you're so great. Sorry for the phone ringing, and we appreciate uh, everything you do. you got a great show.